All right, so welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, buttons for uh, Discord message components. So pretty much buttons allow you to display nice little uh, hoverable and clickable uh, components on a message. And whenever a user clicks on it, a certain action can be performed, right? Now, there's different types of buttons, right? You can see on the docs that they have different colored buttons. There's also link buttons. So for example, if you were to click on that button, it will open up that uh, link in your browser. There's also emoji buttons, which is just, I guess, text with emoji. Uh, and they also have disabled buttons too. Uh, anyways, so uh, there's a couple ways that you can actually use buttons. So for example, let's say if you are using slash commands, you can actually reply to the user uh, and you can attach buttons to that message that is being re that is uh, replying that is being used to reply to the user. You can also send a message directly to a channel and attach buttons to it. Okay, so we'll take a look at those two different examples. So uh, what I'll do is, let me just zoom out a little bit, okay? And let's go ahead and reuse, or you know what, maybe not reuse. Let's go ahead and just create a new slash command. So what we'll do is I'll create a new slash command and we'll write an else if case to check. So that'll be right over here. So after this, so after this register command, so else if interaction that command name equals 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 and i'll just call this a uh, button just for testing purposes okay and i'll go ahead and create that button uh whoops i'll create that button.js file and let me just copy and paste uh one of my previous command over so i don't have to retype everything all over again okay and we'll get rid of everything except for set name and set description which we'll just change to button. Okay, perfect. And let's just go ahead and inside our index.js file, we'll import that command. So import button command from commands button.js. All right, and then we'll have to just take this uh, import, pass it inside this array, like this. Pass it, in, uh, insert into the array, okay? Uh, all right, cool. So our button command should be registered. Uh, let's just double check our console. Our bot hasn't re-logged in yet, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can make it, uh, how we can uh, use the interaction reply method to uh, reply to the user and also attach buttons on the message. And then I'll show you how we can send a direct message to the channel and have buttons appear on that message, okay? So you'll have different examples of how this works. Okay, cool. So our bot is logged in. And if I go over to Discord, I should be able to see the button command right over here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, do this. So let's see right over here. So else if interaction.command name is equal to button. So when we execute that command, when we enter that command, it's going to go ahead and go to this else if case because you know that's the name of the command right button and what i want to do is i just want to re reply let's just simply do content button and i will go ahead and save and just restart just to make sure that our command is actually working it's always important to test your code as you're writing it so let's do button and it says button okay perfect so now that we know that it works let's go ahead and add some buttons to it so the way that we can add buttons is what we do is as a second property inside this uh, interaction reply options object, right? We just go ahead and just pass in the components property, okay? And it's very similar to how we've been passing in components uh, in our previous episodes, right? Uh, it's just literally an array. And what we need to do is we need an action row, okay? So buttons need to be inside action rows, and you can have only... A max of five buttons and if you have uh, buttons in the action row it cannot contain a select menu at the same time and vice versa okay so we can add up to a total of five buttons which is great so what we'll do is we'll first create an action row using the discord JS builders and one thing that I want to clarify is that uh, you actually don't even need the discord JS builders library because a lot of because I think yeah they actually merged that whole library with discord js itself so a lot of these uh classes that i had imported you could have also imported it from the builders package but you don't need to do that if you're using the latest version of discord js because it's been merged okay 
So let's go ahead and create a new action row. So right over here, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so new action row builder, set components. Okay, and this should just be, I believe, an array. Uh, or maybe not an array, but actually it's just, uh, an, yeah, yeah, not an array, sorry. It's just we can pass in as many things as we want separated by commas. So we'll new, new, I think we'll need to create a new instance of a button builder. So I, I think button builder is the correct one. Uh, yep, so that'll be right over here. So I'm just going to click on this, and this that will import the button builder class from the Discord JS package. And I can go ahead and just call the methods. So I can set the custom ID. We'll just set this to button one. Uh, set label so that's how the uh, that's how that's what the text you want to be displayed on the button so just do button one so that's what the button will say and I think uh, set the style so we'll import button style from the discord JS package which is just going to it's pretty much just an enum okay and if I were to uh, look over here, you can see that it has all the different styles. So danger, link, primary, secondary, success. And if you want to know uh, the differences, you can just look at the docs and it tells you. I think uh, the only difference is just the color of the button. Okay. At least for all I know. Okay, so we'll set the style and I think that's all we'll need to set. Okay. Um. Cool. So I think this should be it's let's go ahead and look at our logs okay so our bot has just restarted and let's go ahead and use the button command and there you go you can see that it's now sending us a response with the button and if i want to add more buttons i can do that right all i'll have to do is just pass in another instance of button builder and i'll set another i'll set a different custom id so i'll set that to button two set the label to button two and I'll set the style to secondary. All right, so the bot has restarted. Let's go to our application, or let's go to our Discord app, or Discord server. Let's do slash button. And now it sends two. Now it sends two buttons. And if you wanted to work with a link button, what you would do is, I think with link buttons. Um, just make sure yeah so i think with link buttons i think you actually cannot set a certain property i don't remember exactly uh i think i think yeah instead of setting a custom id you just set a url otherwise it will throw an error so for example i'm going to go ahead and call the set url method and i'll just go ahead and pass in the url to discord js the discord js docs right over here and you'll see that it should throw an error, I think, if I have a custom ID set. So if I do this, yep, it's not sending and it's throwing an error. And it's saying that URL and custom ID are mutually exclusive. So we cannot actually have a custom ID, which makes sense, right? Uh, let's do this, Discord JS docs. Let's save that. Yep, that makes perfect sense. So we cannot have the custom ID and the URL set at the same time. It doesn't really make much sense, right? Because it's a URL, it's going to take you to a different page. It wouldn't make sense to actually have a custom ID on there. All right, so let's go back to our Discord. So let's do slash button. And you can see now over here, if I were to click on this, it would just open up, uh, it would just open Discord, the Discord docs. Okay, so that's pretty much how buttons work. Uh, you, again, you can reply to uh, the interaction. Okay, you can also, uh, and I'll show you this and then we'll end the video right over here. You can also just send messages directly to a channel with the button attached. I've actually seen a lot of servers where they have messages sent from the bot and it has all the buttons attached there. Okay, and I'll show you how the interaction works. I'll show you how to handle the interaction as well. So we're not, we're actually not even quite done yet. So first, let me go ahead and do this. Let's do client on message create. Let's listen to the message create uh, event. And what I'll do is I'll check to see if the message was sent by a bot. And if it is, I'll return. And what I'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and just do 
message dot channel dot send and we'll pass in an object and for content i'll just go ahead and do uh hello world and then for components it's the same exact thing it's an array of components and we'll just copy and paste everything that we had wrote earlier right over here the action row builder with all of the buttons okay so let's go ahead and save and wait for our bot to restart so let's go ahead and send the message and you can see that the message is being sent from the bot and it has the buttons uh attached and this is without replying to the interaction right we're just we're just listening to a message create event and whenever a user sends a message it will have the bot respond with these buttons okay so that's pretty much how it works so if you wanted to go about creating your if you wanted to create like your commands without using slash commands and using like the old school fashioned way where you would have your own command prefix and you have to check to see what the command name was and you have to parse the arguments if there were any if you wanted to do it that way uh this is how you would get buttons attached onto the message right so that's also another option so that is going to be pretty much it uh for this video on how to actually add buttons to the message itself in the next episode i'll show you how we can handle the button interaction so for example if we click on the button it should do something i'll show you how we can actually handle the interaction so now what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go ahead and handle the button interaction so basically whenever we click on the button we need to obviously handle that interaction otherwise it's not going to do anything and we do that by just obviously listening to the interaction create event so similar to all the other uh, um interactions that we've been handling the button interaction is the same exact thing so there's a method as you could predict called interaction is button right is button and this returns a boolean so if it is a button Let's go ahead and just log out the interaction. And I'm going to go and just write button interaction. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and use that slash command again. Or I'll probably do this. Uh, oh, well, let me do this first. So let me use the slash command. And then I'll go ahead, click on the button. So let's do that so let's click on the button okay so let me show you the logs you can see that right over here let me, zo let me just uh, zoom out or not zoom out but like zoom in a little bit and scroll up so you can see that we have button interaction so because we click on the button and it tells you this is this is the uh, object type uh and then it gives you all of the basic uh data right and we can literally do whatever we want right uh, for example, if you want to know which button was clicked on, uh, the easiest thing that you could do is just check the custom ID that you set for the button. Right? That's why the custom IDs are very, 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 very uh, helpful because it allows you to know which button the user clicked on. Okay. So, for example, set custom ID. It's a uh, the ID is button number one. Okay, and that's what is shown over here. And if we clicked on button number two, right? You can see that we get another interaction object after uh, the interaction create event was fired and you can see that the custom id is button two okay now if we click on the um the link button nothing's going to really happen in fact nothing happens at all right because uh why would it because it's just a link button okay and that's why having the actual custom id doesn't really make any sense okay so for example if i click on this again uh okay and all that did was just open up the discord js docs okay so that's how we can uh handle the button interactions and of course you could literally reply to the user as well so you can do interaction on reply you can do content thanks for clicking on the button and then if we were to save and then restart the bot same thing would happen all right, thanks for clicking on the button. Click on the Discord JS Docs button, nothing happens. Okay, that does not fire an interaction create event. Okay, what about um what about whenever we click on buttons that are on the message object itself that are sent directly to the channel without slash commands? 
I'm pretty sure they work the same exact way, but let's go ahead and try it out. So let's go ahead and send a regular message, and we still have our code from the last video. This will send hello world with the buttons, and let's go ahead and test it out. So uh, I'll change the IDs. Let me change to three and four, just so that we don't get confused. Okay, so our bot restarted. Great. Let's say hello. Message is sent. Buttons three and four. Okay, let's click on the button. And you can see that the same exact thing is happening, right? Whenever we click on these buttons, it's going to fire an interaction create event. And then we just check to see what type of interaction it was. It's a button interaction. So we can go ahead and do whatever it is that we want. And to know which button was clicked on, we can just check the custom ID. Okay. Now, obviously, there's other properties too that you can check. For example, you can check to see if the button was... Um, a, I, think, I think there's other properties too, I think. Like if the button was a primary type button, I think. Let me see if I can uh, look for that. But I don't think uh, it would be a good idea to uh, check the type of button because you can obviously have duplicate. You can obviously have like duplicate uh, buttons of the same type. Like you can have more than one button of the same type. For example, I can have two buttons that are primary type buttons, right? So it wouldn't make sense to check the type anyways. Um, but I don't think... Uh, yeah, I don't think uh, this itself even tells you anything about the the uh, the button style. Okay, so you would have to really check the ID of the button. Okay. Um, I think component type, though, is what... Yeah, I think it's component type that... Let me actually log this real quick. Or let me see if... Uh... Yeah, let me log this again. So I think that's really it when it comes to buttons. It's not really uh, that complex, right? It's just another component that you can click on and it fires an interaction create event and you can just check to see what type of interaction it was. And you can do whatever you want with it. You can apply to the user. Uh, you can even show a modal too if you want to by just using the interaction.show modal method. Right? You can do whatever you want. It's just up to you. But that's how you can handle it. Okay, so that is going to be pretty much it for this video. So hopefully you all enjoyed it. And I will see you all in the next episode. Peace out.